Planning Commission. Hopefully we've got a couple more council members that are, or at least one more that'll be in tonight. I don't know two of them that will not be here. Um, first order of business. Scott, do you want to tell us a little bit about our, uh, our Title IX policies? Okay, I have copies if anybody wants a copy. Basically, uh, last summer, the uh, state legislator, le legislature had uh, come up with a, a policy that uh, all cities and counties and districts uh, need to develop a, uh, a policy regarding uh, uh, community athletic programs and uh, uh, not discriminating based on sex. Um, basically, it's kind of like a Title IX uh, with the uh, colleges that we think of. Uh, there have to be so many women's and men's sports. Um, uh, there's already state laws that kind of require uh, cities and states and, and government to not discriminate based upon uh, gender uh, and other things such as uh, sexual orientation, uh, race, and religion, etc. Uh, but this is uh, requiring the city to come up with an actual policy uh, written down uh, and uh, also to requiring the city to come up with uh, a, a way to publish it and a contact person uh, for the policy. So what uh, I have uh, done, uh, this isn't uh, all myself, uh, uh, Jim Dunn had uh, created the first policy um, and uh, I had uh, taken a look at the statute and made some revisions. Uh, so the recommendation is based upon uh, the statute itself uh, and based upon what other cities have already done. Uh, we were supposed to have, uh, all the cities were supposed to have a policy in place by January 1st of this year, um, but uh, obviously we're a little behind the eight ball on that. So I've taken a look at what other cities have done, uh, including uh, neighboring cities here and uh, made this recommendation. Uh, so basically the city uh, would uh, not uh, be required to, according to this policy, be required not to uh, discriminate based on sex in the operation, conduct, or administration of community athletic programs. Uh, and uh, uh, also to uh, relay that policy to anybody that's going to have a, a license or permit from the city to use any of the city facilities. So uh, we would also need to input in uh, any publications that we have. For example, like there's a uh, license or a permit application, uh, we would need to include our policy uh, in that. Uh, and I, there's a little short policy that we can put if we have just flyers about the community programs that we might be passing to the public um, that we can use instead of this entire long policy. But the long policy needs to be on the website for the city and be passed out uh, to anyone interested in using it. Yes? So when they sign for the permit, they sign recognition that they've, ex they've understood that they've read this policy? Yes, and they're supposed to also abide by the policy. And it says here, publish a non-discrimination policy on the city's website. Now, do we have to post that at any of the fields? In other words, we have our rules that we have for hours, alcohol, whatever. Do we have to post this or is it? There's no requirement pursuant to the statute that we actually post it at the facility. Um, but if we would like, we could, you know, just reference there's that we uh, follow the, it's called the Fair Play and Community Sports Act. And then, you know, say, see our website. Um. Scott, when we talk about not discriminating between gender sports. Mm -hmm. Where does that put us if Pop Warner football wants to come in and use one of our soccer fields for football, yet they don't have a women's offsetting sport? It's, I, I don't think the policy is that we have to have the offsetting sports like we think of Title IX. I think it's that we're not discriminating. We're not saying that we're going to, because you're uh, you know, girls football or whatever, soccer or whatever the sport might be, that we're going to put you in the bad fields and the outskirts of town and give you the terrible facilities. Um, that would be the type of discrimination we're talking about. So if there's only a Pop okay. Warner football, and if we have enough facilities to fulfill all the needs of all of what everybody wants, then we're fulfilling it. We're not mandated to have equal, uh, equal opportunities. It just has to be equal access. 
does it have to be brought up then on a first come first serve basis so that you're not no chance to discriminate by the fact that well uh, the boys and the girls here now now how do you determine who was first on the that's um, I believe that's the way Trevor Reed, correct me if I'm wrong that's the way the codes written now those portions are actually in code um, one of the things that we're dealing with right now is with the little league groups the junior baseball groups and on and on and on is that whole setup now that we have kind of sort of competing groups in the community whereas up to this year we sounds like we really didn't have they're all kind of looking at that date now going okay so on that date and you know we don't want to start three or four people starting to camp out at 5 a.m. on January 2nd so we're, I think we're gonna massage that a little bit this fall and uh, try and do a little bit more mediation with the groups and that type of stuff to, to try and give all of them some access if we can do they currently reserve days and times, or is it just, I mean, is there a, is there a practice where they come in and reserve certain days and certain fields? Sure. Can I go through that yeah. process? Yeah, Mayor Gardner alluded to um, specific organizations requesting specific fields. Like this year, the JBO, Junior Baseball Association, or organization is utilizing Bates Field over Hathaway and asked for specific days and times. And East County Little League has asked for specific permission for like Hamlet Park and the other facilities that we have. Schmidt, which is actually a joint venture with the uh, School District. So we're planning on getting together with the stakeholders, specifically with baseball, softball. Obviously, there's soccer and Pop Warner and other affiliations that will need to be addressed. But working ahead of that, so we don't have a lineup on, on March 1 for athletic facility use and having them collaborate collaboratively sit at the table and work through a policy that's going to work for everyone because we could have more affiliations asking for field use and it's limited as far as what the city actually owns for assets mm -hmm. um, they depend on Pendleton Fields which owns their own by Pendleton and then uh, the school district and then other private fields and the schools have been involved in all the discussions to this point as well as well what about Pendleton do they have to do do they have to follow the same rules Pendleton Good question. I mean, yes, any. I mean, we because it's any facility that the city operates, conducts, or administers. It's, yeah, see, it doesn't do, have to own. Yeah, we don't do any of that. It's all privately done, and they run okay. the individual groups. I don't think there's any agreement between the city and Pendleton at all. Okay. Well, then it's whatever the city's connected with, and as long as we're out there plowing the fields or mowing the lawns or whatever, and doing it equally. Molly, the other thing is, see, on, like on, on at, at, at times for the uh, fireworks stands permits, it's it's a first come first serve. Is that correct, Chief? Yeah. And then the other thing is, is that January one, you can come down here and reserve one of our parks, mm -hmm. but it's first come first serve too. So I, that's where my question came from: is how do you how do you do this? That's what we're asking too. <laughs> well, just to be clear about first come first serve that doesn't apply to a previous year so if somebody has been using it 20 years in a row that doesn't constitute first come correct better be a policy huh well, as far as the discrimination goes I mean it's, it's an anti-discrimination so we're not basing our decision based upon